If you have never done anything that made you nervous, where would you be right now? Most of us would have never have gone to school. We would have never had applied for a job, and we would have never have gone on a date. It's only when we embrace these challenges that make us nervous and get outside of our comfort zone that we're able to grow and experience these bigger things. Over the past few years, I've become really fascinated by this idea of getting out of my comfort zone. I've been very proactive in scaring myself by jumping out of airplanes, traveling across the world, and facing a number of personal fears. And what I've come to realize is that every time I get out of my comfort zone, it changes my outlook. It puts other challenges into perspective. And most importantly, it enables me to become comfortable with the things that used to absolutely terrify me. And so, the more that I've come to see the benefit of getting outside of my comfort zone, the more passionate I've become about encouraging others to do the same. And in January, I began to wonder, what can I do to inspire other people to get out of their comfort zone and give them that little push that they need? And I had an idea. I wanted to show people a visual representation of what their comfort zone looks like right now and what it could be and what that would mean for them in the hope that by seeing the difference between the two, they'd be motivated towards that goal by doing things that are outside of their comfort zone. Unfortunately for me, there was no metric or device for measuring comfort zones. So I began to question, what if you could measure your comfort zone? When we talk about comfort zones, we're referring to a form of mental conditioning that we all experience that creates these artificial mental boundaries that determine what we believe we can and can't do. So if we were to measure someone's comfort zone, we'd need to identify what that person believes they can and can't do. And not just whether they're prepared to go skydiving or bungee jumping, but also factoring in the professional and general life challenges that we all experience. So I found a way to do this, and I developed an algorithm for measuring comfort zones, which has since been confirmed as scientifically valid by a registered psychologist at Deakin University. I put this algorithm into a tool for anyone to use. And within the first few months, over 10,000 people had measured their comfort zone. This meant that 10,000 people had spent a fraction of their day thinking about getting outside of their comfort zone. Now, I believe that every action begins in the form of an idea. And if 10,000 people had just absorbed this idea of getting out of their comfort zone, that could be the start of some amazing actions for those people. It also meant that I now had data. I had this huge database containing everyone's scores and information on all the different challenges they believe they can and can't do. So I was able to begin looking for insights and trends. I found that, on average, males had a larger comfort zone than females. I found that our comfort zone changes as we get older. It can either shrink or grow, depending on how much we challenge ourselves over a lifetime. Perhaps the most interesting thing I found was that there was a positive correlation between how much we get out of our comfort zone and how much money we earn. When I first looked through this data, I really wanted to try and understand what kind of, what the people who had scored the highest were like and who those people were. So I ordered the results from highest to lowest. And I noticed that the people who had scored in the top 1% were incredibly interesting, successful people. These were athletes, entrepreneurs, and people who were clearly excelling in their field. And this wasn't a coincidence. These people had become successful by pushing their boundaries, challenging themselves, and getting outside of their comfort zone. So this made it very clear to me. If you want something you don't already have, you have to do something you haven't already done. That's what these people have made a habit of doing. 
We all have this comfort zone which determines what we believe we can and can't do. And if you're not being proactive in pushing your boundaries and getting outside of your comfort zone, you're effectively surrendering all of the amazing opportunities and possibilities that exist outside of your comfort zone. And that doesn't have to limit you. So I challenge you to do something this week that's outside of your comfort zone. Because as the saying goes, there are great things waiting for you just outside of it. Thank you.